Hello and welcome to offensive Azure security session. My name is Sergey and I will be your presenter for the next 20 minutes. This is the light version of this session. So you will see only one scenario how things may be compromised. But even this scenario will give you some ideas. Um, if you're a defender, so you will find what can you fix. If you are a pen tester, it will give you ideas how you can try to compromise application in the cloud environment. So let's get started. Before I, I, I start to show you the content, uh, let me say a few words about myself and I promise you we're going to start. So my name is Sergey once again. Um, very important where I'm from. I'm from Russia. So that's my burden to do all of this hacking. And as you can see on the slide, I, I do a lot of pen test and also I'm an instructor, conference speaker. If you want to contact me um, during the session, after the session, whatever it may be, here's the LinkedIn URL. Go ahead and find me. You may ask something, say something, or you may just find some other conferences where I speak. So here on the slide, you may see three scenarios I usually show on this session. So first scenario is hybrid Active Directory. So when you have on-prem ID in the cloud ID and how you compromise all of this environment, then the second scenario is how you can compromise virtual machines and of course application deployed in those virtual machines. And the last one is PaaS where you have a number of services, PaaS services and how you can pen test them. Since that's the only light version, so that's a light version of the session, you will see only one scenario, the last one, which is for many should be the most interesting. So let's take a look on that. And here we're going to cover um, application which is which should be a bit more interesting. In this application, we will have application web application with a SQL database backend. Also, the, the credentials to access backend will not be stored um, locally on the web application. It will be stored in a key vault, and the credentials they will be rotated periodically with Azure Functions. And also application will be protected with application gateway in front uh, with WAF feature enabled. So it looks looks like this application is quite secure, but let's try that first. Let's try that. So I'm gonna jump back to demo as usual. Now let's take a look. How can I try to get into this application? Let me show you one more slide to give an idea what may be in our case an entry point. So my goal, my initial, my, my, my goal is to get access to database because all of the, the most interesting things will be there. Uh, but as you, as you remember, credentials are to access database will be stored in Key Vault. Um, and let, let's first test if I have access to Key Vault or not. I'm gonna go to Key Vault. Maybe this user that was compromised already have access to Key Vault. Let's see that. If I go to secrets, uh, no, there is no permissions to access Key Vault. Let me quickly give permissions to myself to just show you that, um, that th th those something something exists there. I'm gonna just give permission to list. Click add here and go back to secrets. Uh, refresh. Uh, no. Huh. Oh, damn it! I didn't save it. Sorry. Um, let's try again, click add, and let's click save. And now if I go to secrets, I should, yeah, I have password here, pass and username. So let me remove this permission, click save again. And now let's try to somehow get access to to those secrets. And for me, entry point will be key rotation function because it's very commanded to have key rotation, uh, keys or secrets in my case, rotation. Um, and on Microsoft website, you may even find the function that will rotate the secret in the key vault and on the target application like SQL database on, on, on our target. So here's a slide uh, with my uh, with my function. So I have a function and this function will uh, like change password on in SQL database and the key vault at the same time. 
And what the typical problem that I find periodically in the, in the real world, when a function has different configuration compared to key vault. So key vault may, may be very restrictive, but at the same time function will have also like a reader permissions inherited from subscription. And so function will have a bit more permissions. So, so users will have a bit more permissions on that function compared to key vault. Let me show you what I can do if I, if I have a case like this. So I'm going to go to portal and find functions, function applications. And here I have one, one function. So let's take a look at what, what do we have here. In under one func function application, I have two functions. Uh, one is triggered by event grid. Second one is triggered by HTTP. This one is will be more interesting for me because I can trigger that manually. So let me show you the code. Come on. And so uh, by default, when I deploy the function from um, from Microsoft GitHub, from, from GitHub, it will show me the code, code like this. So this code is, is, the, is the legit code to rotate secrets. But what, what may, where may be the problem? The problem is uh, by default function is ac may be accessed uh, via FTP. So if you look at the configuration of the function, Uh, you may find that in general settings FTP is enabled by default. Uh, most in most cases you don't use that, uh, but it's enabled by default. And so, if you go to the deployment center, um, you may find FTP credentials here. And so, here's the FTP credentials. So now let me try to get those credentials, but of course, as usual, from command prompt. Um, so let me open command prompt here and let's try to get, uh, first of all, a URL for F FTP URL to, to connect the function. So here's the FTP URL. Let me copy this and paste to FileZilla. And then I want to get credentials of this function, of this function application. And here's the username. Here's the username. Paste here. And here is the password. Let me copy this. Here's the password. And now I have permissions to log in there. And I can see here the structure, which is my two functions. Let me go to, to the HTTP function. And here, I can, and here I can see the structure of the function. What I can do, I can upload, I can upload my own code and so this code with, with the name called run.ps1 in this case, it's the powerful function. So I can upload my uh, run.ps1 code and this code will be executed when the function is triggered. And so this function, because the function has permissions to access Key Vault, I will access Key Vault and I will get information from Key Vault on behalf of function. And my, my code will just get information I need from Key Vault. Let's try that. I'm going to just open PowerShell and run the command like this. And so let's, let, let's try to get credentials from, from Key Vault. Fingers crossed, I will get it. Also, by the way, I can go to function itself and, and just take a look when it was, when it was executed. If I click monitor. Mm. Nothing here, maybe already. Yeah, it's, it's already give me give, give me information. So um, it finished. Now I can see that username is web app and the password is password. And those, those credentials are will be used to connect to um, SQL Server. So let's try to connect to SQL Server now. Um, so first, let me take this URL and type my password. And now I can see I, I was connected. Um, and I can see my database with tables and the content there. Uh, 
uh, and there, there's there's only one record there. Let me try to do the same from the different workstation. Let me just connect, copy this from different workstation. And now it says, hey, you can't do it because firewall does not allow you to connect to this server. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's take a look how this firewall looked like. Now let's go to database and open this database. So every SQL database in the cloud has this, uh, the SQL server has the firewall database as well, by the way. So if I, if, you, if, I, if I click firewall, I can find here very interesting configuration, which is very, very typical. Uh, this firewall, this firewall has this option enabled. It says allow Azure services and the resources to access this server. What does it mean? Uh, many people think that it, it means that their Azure virtual machines, their Azure services may access the, the, this database. But in fact, it is not really true. Uh, this option means that any, any, once again, any Azure IP address will be able to access this SQL server. So uh, from any from any customer subscription, from any continent, from any country in the world, you will be able to access um, your SQL Server. Uh, Firewall will not filter that, at least, if you have this option enabled. So quite often, uh, the, the, the 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 IT professionals in company, security professionals, they don't really understand the impact of this option. So if I have this option enabled, then any virtual machine in Azure for, from, with Azure IP address may have access to MySQL. Let me disable this. Um, and let's try to uh, in allow only, um, only private access. So there is no public access at all. Now, uh, now um, MySQL is practically better. Um, now um, I have credentials, but access allowed only from internal network. So I cannot access from uh, from anywhere. Um, is it possible to get into database? Uh, yeah, if we compromise the application itself. And so from application, we can get access to SQL database. Let's try to do, the, to, to do it. Let me go back to my portal and I'm going to open application. Um, so if I just uh, go to application configuration, you may find here networking. If I click configure networking, it says, hey, you must have a standard tier if you want to work with networking. So let me upgrade my application to S1. And so now I can connect my application to network. Let me do it real quick. So I'm going to say uh, add VNet. And I want to connect my application to virtual network. Click OK. And so that will take some time before this application will be able to connect. Uh, so as you can see here, it, it's already con it, it says connected, but in the reality, um, what I can do, I can really quickly restart this application to speed things up. So now, if I compromise this application, uh, I will be able, I should be able to uh, get into database. Uh, the quite common question, wait a second, but how to compromise this application, especially if you look at them, if you look here, there's a WAF application firewall will not allow me to just simply get into application. Uh, yes, but I just want to remind you, uh, ju just want to really remind you that we have for web application the same default configuration. FTP is allowed. If I go click configuration and go to general settings, team, I may find here FTP is allowed by default. So quite often companies, they do not disable this FTP. And in the same manner, I can get into 
this application as before. Let me try to do it. So let me close this and this. Um, now, if I just try the same, let me find uh, FTP URL of the application. Uh, copy this. And credentials as well. And so let me type credentials as well. So as you can see here, this application is nothing more than just a PHP page. And let's let's first explore this application. That uh, we'll, we'll just check that the application is working. Let me open the application itself. Let's click here. I can see the application is here and the application is working. So let me just take a look. If I say uh, I'm a user, let's call myself Michael um, and um, um, let's call, say my email is msmith, whatever it may be, whatever.com and let's say submit. This is working, so it's working with database. Our application is working. Now, let me jump back to my FileZilla. And now what I can do, if I, if I know that this application is PHP, what I can do, I can upload my shell. And you know that PHP and ASP as well, by the way, uh, they, they are executed on the server side. So the PHP will be executed on the server side, not on the client side. So if I can upload my, my own PHP code, I can execute something on server. Let me just run my shell and look at this. So now I have access to um, this workstation or the server through web shell. Web shell not, not super interactive. So let me uh, establish, establish the better shell. Um, so on my web shell, I want to, 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 to fix the shell. I, I want to make shell better. And so now I have a shell. Uh, all right. So what I can, what I, what I found here that my username is just a regular user, not the so web server, the web server user, usually, usually a low, priv low privilege user. So I will not be able to do whatever I want on this server. My goal is to connect to SQL database. But the problem is that a reg regular server doesn't have tools to connect to SQL server. Um, I need some sort of management studio for Linux. It's, it's Linux, of course, not Visual Studio. It's not management studio. It will be like a, a SQL CLI. But to install that, I must be an admin. I, have, I must have sudo permissions or root permissions. I don't have it. So what I can do here, I can use some third party tools and the tool that you may try called uSQL, this tool will run without, will work without installation. And so using uSQL, I will try to connect to SQL database. I'm gonna say uh, connect using uSQL and it looks like I, I was connected. Let's try to list tables. And look at this, I can see two tables there. Um, so let's try to list the content. And look at this, so my John Doe and my Michael user are there. So now I have access to SQL database. So uh, I hope all of this was informative and you get an idea how those things all right, so we reached the end of the session. I hope that was useful and interesting and you found some ideas how you can test your applications better. Um, if you want to contact me, I will be happy to do it and I will be happy to answer your question as well. Thank you very much. Bye bye.